Hello, my name is Ivy Bakeman, and for my thesis, I've been working on a novel-length psychological dark romance. I love working within the category of romance, but find that too often characters are portrayed as stereotypes of the sexes. In my own work, I focus on crafting strong females and vulnerable males who mirror the breadth of human emotion one might encounter in real life. My story, entitled The Benefits of an Ending, follows Sirisum, a being who helps humans distance themselves from harmful relationships, and Amadeus, a creature who helps humans let go of their fears in order to fall in love. Through this tale, these two characters explore the intricacies of platonic and romantic love and the importance of knowing when to let go. Chapter 1 Sirisum embraced the cool night air as it passed through her. She loved traveling in her non-corporeal form, weightless and free. It felt as though she were part of the fabric of the wind, yet another strand of material being thrown around without a care. However, this was not one of those times where she could drift at will. She had responsibilities, a job which was more important to her than playing in the breeze. It was her job to find the souls who were not meant to be together, lovers, friends, and family that tore each other apart more than putting them back together. She followed the trail set out for her by the universe, an invisible path formed by the desire of others. It was made up of the love of humans, their breathless kisses that felt like tiny hiccups on her skin. Tonight it led her to Paris, a city of light that was well into the night. Golden beams shone from street lamps and tall skyscrapers. They kept the city moving even when no one was about. They drew an invisible map over the city, unifying it in a way the buildings would never be able to. The architecture would always be a mix of the new and old, a conversation that the humans would have to live with whether they chose to acknowledge it or not. Before long, the breeze swept Sirisum over the Eiffel Tower. Imposing and rough, it had never struck her as one of man's great creations. No matter that the humans' opinions of the monstrosity had shifted into something more positive than when it had first been built. She could persevere, however, because she recognized the path she was on. She was heading straight for the Louvre, a structure that had captured her heart from its original conception. She was even a fan of its newest addition, a glass pyramid sticking out of the center of the older buildings. It was actually this placement more than anything that struck her. To her, it appeared as though the buildings of the past were protecting their younger, more fragile ancestor. It was the brilliance of the new and the workmanship of the old that kept her going, because beyond its surface, Paris was merely a city filled with lust and pain. Humans ruined the simplicity of the landmarks. With their desire, they filled her mind with thoughts and threatened to choke her lungs. She felt their need and it made her wary. They made her think things that she shouldn't, made her imagine herself in their places. She could sense the abandon with which they threw themselves into a situation which could potentially be so damaging. Situations which could hurt the soul more than it could possibly steal one's breath. Humans were reckless with their freedom. She moved on to the darker spaces that the city held, places where few cared to leave their homes at night and city officials no longer bothered to light. Here, she would meet her target. She felt it in the crescendo of sensations that threatened to spin her out of control. Taking care to slow her own path, she stopped herself by several trees. Forcing her body to relax some of the attention her guides inspired, she took note of where she was. It looked as though she had found a small park, or perhaps that was too kind a of word for it. Larger than a city block, but smaller than a true park. It could have once been beautiful, but had long since been forgotten. It was a patch of land overflowing with grass and weeds. The only sounds came from the unruly trees which bowed from their own weight. Nature had taken over this space, reclaiming what was rightfully its own. It was no surprise to Sirisum that she found a couple of teenagers here. It was a secluded space, private without prying eyes. She could make out their forms sitting awkwardly on an old blanket that was threadbare in sections. This allowed the long grass to peek through in places, making the couple appear as though they were part of the landscape rather than intruding on it. Searson told herself to move forward, to end whatever was unfolding before her before it started. However, she paused. It was for the briefest of moments, but it allowed her to see the girl's face slowly redden as she lifted a hand to the boy's cheek. Je t'aime, the girl whispered words of love. Sirison's pulse quickened. 
This was what she had come to end, the hopeful desire of love and the blinding light of passion. Soon the girl would understand that this boy was not good for her. She would be able to look objectively at him without the constraint of a drowning heart. This is what Sirisim had done for centuries at the bidding of her god. She swept in in order to help those who were unable to do so for themselves. Yet even knowing this, she still found herself wondering how the boy would respond to the professions of love. The desire swept over Sirisim in a wave, notifying her that she could delay no longer. Drawing closer, she let her form settle over the girl, swiftly falling into her body until she found herself in the girl's heart. Inside the vessel, she saw how the girl's thoughts and feelings pumped themselves through her body, shook the girl's heart, quickening its natural beat. She tried to ignore the girl's overwhelming notions of love, but when the boy drew the girl closer, pressing his lips to hers, Sirisim had to bite back a groan of displeasure. She hated connecting to another's heart in moments like this. It was too intimate, and it made her job more challenging. She could feel the boy's unpracticed lips, soggy and wet on the girl's, as the girl burned the moment into her heart. Searson watched in exhaustion as new strands entangled themselves upon existing connections, making the girl's heartstrings glow. Hearts held a multitude of heartstrings, thick cords which came together to make up a person's hopes and desires. Luckily, this girl only had a couple hundred cords making up her current heart. She wasn't yet old enough to have acquired thousands. Her life had not bound her to as many things as an adult. Sirisim quickly homed in on several strings with a rose tint to them. She knew the color well and it never failed to sicken her. The rose hue stuck to the original colors in the cord, obscuring their true nature. It was these colors which correlated to the girl's true thoughts and feelings. She hated this kind of harm the most. Caressing the strings, she watched as they began to fall apart. Layer upon layer of individual strand fell away, revealing some of their original color below. She did this for every cord, but was careful to leave some of each one remaining. It would be up to the girl now whether she chose to resurrect the missing strings or to sever them all together. Sirisum wasn't worried, though. She could already feel the girl's desire fading. Love was a chemical reaction not meant for these two. As she finished manipulating the appropriate strings, Sirisum departed with a sense of satisfaction. In the breeze, once again, she noted the ache that swept through her form. She had already saved four other souls tonight, and her body was rebelling. Knowing it was time to replenish her strength and that she didn't have much energy left to maintain this form, she began searching for an appropriate location to land. Letting her nose guide her path, she was thrown more violently through the breeze, intent on her goal. Twisting and twirling in the wind, she soon flung herself to the ground, dizzy with the loss of energy and the sudden return to corporeality. She rolled to a stop on the ground before collapsing back onto it. She took a moment to reacquaint herself with her solid body and stretch out her limbs. While she wasn't human, her natural body looked human. If anyone were to see her now, they might mistake her for a woman in her late 20s or 30s. She had short obsidian hair that stayed out of her eyes on principle, and she wore dark eyeliner as a rule and no jewelry. Tonight, she had chosen to wear a bomber jacket and skinny jeans, an outfit she thought would blend in with the times, but wasn't her favorite costume. While lying back on the ground, she decided to allow herself a short reprieve before sinking into the stream she sensed in the vicinity. Swimming in open water allowed her kind to replenish their power while on Earth. She wasn't quite ready to allow the universe access to her powers again. Knowing that there was a stream to her left only a few feet away, she allowed herself a moment for the first time in the last couple of hours to relax. Sighing, she contemplated wishful thoughts of her warm bed at home, selfishly hoping she wouldn't sense another assignment that night. Hello, little Sior. A voice called out in the dark. It was deep and held a warm edge to it that she imagined could ensnare a nervous deer if it tried. However, she was no deer. The nickname crawled over her skin while apprehension and anger threatened to disrupt her normally calm demeanor. Amadeus. His name swam around her head, coating her brain, invading her thoughts and reminding her of all the times she had seen him before. 
All of them were memorable, but none had been untouched by anger or disaster. I take it you're working, he continued. How much damage has been done today? How many lives ruined? Searson dug her fingers into the dirt, attempting to keep herself on the ground instead of sitting up to face him. She didn't want to see the gleam in his eye as he caught her glowering at him. She could picture it now. He would look smug and childish within the loose strands of his blonde hair. He might even be sneering at her in that particularly unattractive way of his that would normally make her eyes roll. This was a reaction she could not afford tonight. She could hear the determination in his tone, the soft warning that said he knew she was no match for him in her weakened state. Without even enough energy to slip into her other form, she continued staring at the sky, not quite looking at the clouds, which at any other time may not have appeared as ominous. She needed a way out. Searson tried to picture her surroundings in her mind, using her memory to reconstruct the landscape. Think, just think, how far can you possibly be from this dream? She begged her mind to remember, to conjure up anything that might help her get to the relative safety of water and its restorative powers. Didn't I hit something as I landed? She could just barely remember the rough branches of a tree grazing against her form. It wasn't much, but it was a start. By playing her landing in her mind, she was able to determine that the tree was on her left, which meant it was in the same direction as the water. Placing the tree, she was able to add other features to the landscape. A few well-manicured bushes and some flowers she was already silently apologizing to for trampling. It would be his fault. This man who didn't know how to listen, who even as she actively tried to ignore, was monologuing from her benefit, tapping at memories that stained her. I've got it this time, he said. I know what to do. I'm going to help you so you won't keep making a mess, so you won't keep getting away with destroying things that you have no right to. She felt even more dirt edging its way under her nails with the force of her restraint. Different images with so many colors and tears and sounds and even laughter tried to fill her mind, things she pushed away in favor of contemplating them. Searson didn't like the unnatural calm that encompassed his words. Their previous encounters had all been about his desire to make her understand. They yelled and he threatened, but his words had never held a purpose outside of that. This was different. This held the promise of a plan. Thank you for listening to my story. I hope you enjoyed it.